Welcome to the Think Podcast. So, jo- Joseph David Deitzer wants to know how you got so good at chess. Oh, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically retired now. I'd say the uh, issue is, first of all, you got to learn some of the basics, like how t- uh, different pieces were combined here, the tactics, learn a lot of the tactics, uh, because that's what will win most of the games for you, and also some of the ba- the end games, because you get down to a certain, you got to know how a few pieces work before you can work out how many pieces work. So these both the end games and tactics are probably the first thing you should be studying before you work out uh, how to play with the whole board of pieces okay Okay. and then in case a lot of studying of master games i mean because um why reinvent the wheel when you've got uh, hundreds of years of chess history people learning from the previous uh, on the footsteps of giants so you study the the great masters of the game that reminds me of there was that show that came out the queen's gambit yes and she's interesting she's yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I read the book years ago too. Uh, oh, is that right? I read the book when it came out in the mid '80s. Yes. Okay, I didn't know it was a book. The yeah, show was a book. Yeah. The show was interesting in terms of all of the chess, but there were other elements of the show where I'm like, mm. I can't, I can't watch this. They really? Just, they, okay. Yeah, they, they. Uh, for me, it, it offended my. Uh, oh, my they more, took they took some things out which which I wouldn't have wanted to see uh, myself. There are some things I wouldn't have wanted to see, but other things. Yeah, you know, I, I see what you're saying, but I, I did watch it all the way through. Yeah, yeah, and I, you I enjoyed it? it. Yeah, I did. And also, matching? you had uh, Gary Kasparov actually. Uh, I think was the one who made the games for them to play. It's actually very sophisticated chess games too. So high quality chess games in that too. Okay, so you're watching it as a, a chess master, and you're saying this is this is quality. This, it was so it was accurate in what they were portraying. Yeah. I've very much so. Okay. Uh, well, even it reminds you of what chess was like in the '60s. It's changed a bit now, but it sort of reminds you of what I used when, when I was younger. Uh, How has it changed? Or oh, it's speed up, no adjournments. Okay, so you just play the game, you can play the game all the way through. And of course, you have computers now, which you didn't have back then. Hmm. And and also nowadays you've got very strong female players, which you didn't have back then either. Which is which what is what makes her story so compelling. Yeah, but this is before you have the Polgar sisters. It was just before the Polgar sisters became so so good and sensational. And now okay. uh, it's almost a, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's something which is before the Polgar sisters and before computers, before all these sort of things. So it seemed a bit dated, but they, of course they set it back in the, in the in the time it was written for in okay. the sixties. Yeah, uh, David Palman wants to know if you could beat Tim McGrew at chess. I would, uh, judging by our different rating, we all chess players have ratings as an indication of strength. And the difference between the ratings is supposed to give a prediction of what sort of uh, score people would have against each other. And I've looked at them up. I think I'm about 200 points above Dr. McGrew. So I'd score about three to one against him, I think. Okay. All right. Well, there's the gauntlet has been. It wouldn't be a pushover, but I think I wouldn't, I would win three to one. Okay. Yeah. 